focusing on the baby lock accomplish is fun. But there's a couple of things I need to do before we get going on that. The first thing is, is I need to make sure that we uh, have our feed dog adjustment dial set on that green setting or that heavy setting. And then I'm gonna make sure I have my stitch length set at three and a half. I've already attached my walking foot. And when you're attaching your walking foot, it's a little trickier. The first thing you have to do is you're gonna have to take this set screw completely out. And then you're going to align um, the bracket over the presser foot bar. The next thing is, is you, there's a little uh, hook or a little claw. That has to go over your needle screw area, okay? And if it's not over your needle screw area, you will find that your walking foot doesn't actually move forward or it doesn't walk forward. So I've marked my fabric with the lines that I want to stitch on. I've gone ahead and I've placed my walking foot over that mark line, centering the line in between the two toes or the two legs of the walking foot so that my needle is sitting right on top or right over that marked line. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start to stitch my very first line. And Again, you always control the speed that your machine sews based on how much or how heavy you press on the foot control. So as I come to the end, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually use the scissors cut, raise my presser foot, and I'm going to bring my fabric in and adjust the uh, position of the second marked line with my presser foot, and I'm going to go ahead and sew. Now if I wanted to, I could uh, after I'm done with the second line, the third and the fourth line, I could fill in between my marked lines by using the depth of my presser foot, or I could actually go in and use marked lines. Uh, it kind of always depends upon the project I'm working on if I mark or I use the depth of my presser foot. I find that I tend to be a little bit more accurate with marked lines because I have something to follow. Another thing that you can also use is you can use the uh, stitch guide that we used earlier in a couple of segments on a couple of um, uh, techniques that we did. That works great too. You just set that up for the depth of the distance that you want between the needle and the stitching and you just go to town as, as stitching across your entire fabric piece. But I will say when you use something like that stitch guide that has kind of a moving part or moving parts is to always, always, always check that depth to make sure that nothing has shifted while you have been stitching. So this is my last line that I stitched and I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my channel quilting. Now I think that that is pretty darn accurate. Um, I've stitched on all of my lines. I think it's a very decorative accent to any project, whether it's something as far as a quilt that you're quilting or it might be a garment you're adding uh, quilting to or even a bag. So by adjusting the feed dog adjustment dial to that heavier setting, you can see how I was able to handle the thickness of this quilt, which is the top, the batting, and the backing, and the machine handled it beautifully.